Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to adjust your ASP.NET MVC Core application in order to be able to host it behind the application uh, gateway inside of Service Fabric. So uh, what we're going to get started with is basically our uh, application that we created in the prior videos where we adjusted it to load some CSS as well as JavaScript files from a specific path uh, related to our application using the base path uh, for our service. And we're going to extend that to another part of our ASP.NET MVC Core application, which is for the ASP.NET Core routing itself. So uh, let's take a quick look. So first of all, here I have my empty service fabric instance, and I'm going to open up the solution real quick and show you some of the changes we did before. And uh, the changes we did were inside of the layout as well as the validation scripts partial. And the changes were specifically around being able to get the stateless service context uh, instance and then get the absolute path for our application, which is basically the SF context application uh, slash SF context.ui. So if we were to add that path to our URL, we'd actually be able to start getting this content. Otherwise, if you try to access it uh, through the browser, um, then it actually your application would actually be able to serve that those set of files there. So uh, it would look like you don't have any CSS and JavaScript being applied. So we're going to take that and extend it um, for the ASP.NET MVC Core. And the way we're going to do that first is let's deploy the application and show you um, the current state of it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click uh, Publish. I'm going to go ahead and choose my uh, cluster that I have, and I am going to go ahead and um, hit publish here. So we don't have anything published right now, so the version number shouldn't matter. So let's give it a moment until it deploys, and we'll uh, open it up in the browser and go from there. Okay, as you can see, the application got deployed. So if we try to actually navigate to this uh, link right here, uh, we should be able to see our application. And you'll notice that there is no um, images being shown here. And that is because of that change we did uh, to the CSS and JavaScript. So, and the reason for it is because we're actually accessing the URL directly to the instance node instead of going through the application proxy. So. Or application gateway. So let's actually do that right now. So we're going to go to our application gateway and we're just going to change that to go to our um, SF context.ui application and let's navigate to that. And as you can see now that we're accessing it through the gateway itself, we get our CSS as, as well as JavaScript. However, if you notice uh, when I hover over home on the bottom of the screen, it actually shows me a different URL as well as the about um, and the context pages. So if I click on them, it actually takes me to a different URL that doesn't uh, uh, exist uh, from my application gateway perspective. So in order to actually fix this, we need to adjust our routing in our ASP.NET MVC Core application itself. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And um, the place where you would do this is actually inside of a startup CS file. And in here, what we're going to want to do is within the configure method, we're going to go ahead and add another variable here, and that's going to be called base path, just like we did in our view. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need to first get a reference to the uh, context object that has information about our uh, application service itself. So in here, uh, we have the iApplicationBuilder interface. So through this interface, we should be able to get to, uh, to the services that are available within this application. So if we go app dot application services dot get service. And in this case, we're going to call stateless service context. And we're going to go ahead and um, import that in, uh, namespace. And then we're going to then do a question mark here just in case uh, there's a null that gets returned so it doesn't actually set to any value. And then we're going to obtain the, the actual path. So the path is obtained by actually going through the service name dot absolute path. 
So uh, this actually gets us the specific uh, name of our service, which would be SF, uh, SF Context Application uh, slash SF Context that UI. Now, the thing with routing is that it actually doesn't like to uh, be started with a uh, forward slash. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually trim that from our base path if it's not known. So uh, the way we're going to do that is base path equals base path um, question mark dot substring. And then we're just going to start with one. Basically, it's going to skip the first character and give me the rest of the string. So now that we have that path, we should be able to actually leverage that. And in order to make this work in ASP.NET MSC Core, uh, the way I found uh, to do this is you basically just copy this uh, default route, and I'll call this app gateway default. And I'm going to just concatenate the values in here. So string concat, and we're going to give it base path, comma, and then we're going to actually uh, add a, a forward slash in here. And we're going to go ahead and close out the, the parentheses. So this is actually enough for us to be able to make the routing uh, work in our application. So let's test this out real quick by uh, publishing a new version. And I'm going to go over here, change it to version.4, hit save, and hit publish. So after a little bit, uh, this will actually redeploy our application. And then I'll be able to show you uh, the results of this. So let's take a look. Okay, as you can see, the uh, first node actually got deployed. So if we actually try to go to this through our gateway now, um, we should be able to load the application. So it's loaded in this case. And now if we take a look at the same URLs that we had before for the menu items, now you can see that we have the slash SF context application slash SF context that UI actually in our URL path. So now as we begin to navigate through our different links here, um, it will actually start working. So the reason why it got hung up is because the second node loaded and it needed to start. So now because we're actually able to navigate to it, everything is working as expected. So um, one last thing I want to show you real quick, um, just to make it more useful. You can also obtain the information about the version number of your application. So sometimes you might want to actually show that information inside of your uh, footer of the application just for uh, references or you might want to use it for another reason. So the way to actually do that, if we go back to our application, let's open up the uh, shared layout file and let's find the footer and I'll go ahead and remove this uh, name of our application and replace it with the value that I want. So the first value actually I want to show is the machine where this uh, this application is hosted on. So we'll go to environment type machine name put a dash and then uh, here what we're going to do is we're going to reference the service context uh, that we imported before which is the same class we just used to obtain the base path as well and we're just going to use this uh, property here and we'll go dot code package activation context dot and if you look for a version there's a property called code package version and that's all you need uh, to actually obtain the uh, the package version of your service. So, and also what I'm going to add here is actually I'm going to add a V just to indicate that's a version. And then at the end, I'm going to also add a date timestamp. Now, uh, depending on how you want to develop your application, if you do want to show the date timestamp, you might want to do it in universal time or localize it to the end user itself. But in this particular case, for demo purposes, I'm just going to output the current time uh, that is on the server itself. So I'll go ahead and save this. Uh, right click and publish once again. I'll go ahead and uh, change the version number once more. And go ahead and publish it now. So as soon as it uh, begins publishing, we'll be able to actually see it through the same process uh, that it's actually bringing down the node and bringing up the other uh, well bringing up the node and then bringing down the other node as well because we have two instances running 
and uh, you also notice that if I start actually refreshing on this page here, right now it doesn't have the version number. If I hit refresh, once it actually begins to deploy our application, we should be able to start seeing the content load. Okay, so as you can see, one of the nodes actually started showing the information. So it's hosted on DevSF1. Uh, version 105, which is the version we just deployed. And if I actually keep refreshing, um, once the second node actually comes up, we should be able to see the other node show up. And that's the beauty of uh, the application gateway is it makes it appear as though everything ended up being seamless to the end user. And in fact, it was pretty seamless uh, with some minor delays as uh, the application instance actually starts up. So as you can see now, we actually show a dev SF3. And if we keep refreshing now that both nodes are actually up and running, you can actually see that we're routing between the, the two nodes. So for troubleshooting purposes, or maybe for your dev environment, this might actually be useful information uh, to have, um, as well as being able to actually now fully utilize your normal SP.NET MAC routing to be able to uh, host this application in such a way where you can deploy it with very little interruption to your end users. So hopefully this was useful. Um, and in the future video, what I'm going to show you is how do you actually load balance the traffic? Because if you notice that I'm actually always navigating to the same um, service fabric node. Now you can have scenarios where that particular node goes down and all of a sudden you're not able to actually even reach the application gateway uh, service itself. So I'm going to show you how to set up a, a very easy uh, load balancer without using an external appliance. You basically can use a feature of Windows called Network Load Balancing to be able to facilitate the routing and load distribution between all of the nodes in your service fabric. So um, look out for that video in the future. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and, go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this content, uh, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you next time.